Today's episode is all about flexibility. I'm reviewing the 2019 Leisure Travel Vans Unity FX, and we're starting right now. What's going on? Neil Balthaser here, and welcome to Ultra Mobility, the channel where you vote for the RVs that you want reviewed and compared. It was a close one this week, neck and neck between the Travato 59KL and the Leisure Travel Vans Unity FX. But the Unity supporters poured in at the last minute, pushing it over the finish line with a final vote tally of 55 to 45. So that's the review we're doing today. No worries, lithium lovers, the 59KL review is coming out next week. Let's take a quick look at some exterior shots. The Unity is about as good looking as a huge box on the back of a cutaway chassis can look. At least Leisure made an effort to try and give this thing a kind of streamlined look, maybe, sort of. I mean, come on, it's a lot better looking than the bread delivery vans and airport shuttles coming out of some manufacturers. Who said it? I said it. You get 34 cubic feet of exterior storage, but there's no pass-through storage. Don't cry for me, Argentina. You do get a slide-out, which includes two compartment drawers that come out with the slide-out. So that's kind of cool. Built on the Mercedes Sprinter 3500 cab chassis, this rear-wheel drive 3.0-liter V6 diesel engine sports a five-speed transmission and delivers 188 horsepower and 325 foot-pounds of torque. You can expect to see around 16 to 18 miles per gallon. That's pretty good mileage for a house. Let's briefly talk about hookups. No, I'm not talking about that kind of hookup. How old do you think I am? I'm talking about utility hookups and on the Unity FX, they're located on the driver's side near the back. The good news, the cable TV and shore power plugs are up higher. The bad news, water and the optional macerator control switch are located way down low. All right, let's head inside and see what all this flexibility talk is about. This is the layout of the Unity FX. You've got a lounge up front that has all these crazy configurations, and we'll get into that in a minute. There's a Murphy bed that drops down to convert the lounge into your bedroom, and we'll also get to that. Midsection, you've got our galley, and in the back, there's a second lounge and your bathroom. Okay, let's talk about this front lounge since it's the star of the show. I will admit there's a ton of different configurations you can do with this lounge. Let's just run through them so you can see for yourself. You can have two individual chairs with a small flip-up table between. You can move the seat backs to face each other and flip down a larger table for dining. You can fill in the middle section and have a large sofa. You can extend out the base of each chair, grab some cushions from the rear lounge and have matching ottomans. You can extend up the armrests to add support for the back cushions and create a chaise lounge. Or you can drop in the armrest slash drink holder and create theater seats. Also, the two cab seats swivel around and there's a pedestal table that can be set up between them as well. So that's a lot of flexibility. And I do have to hand it to Leisure Travel Vans the concept is really cool. But I also have to point out some things that bother me. First, there are no three-point seat belts other than the two cab seats. This is a two-person RV, max. And that's a shame because the Unity FX would be more flexible if it could carry four passengers. Also, to seat four people at the table, you're going to have to perform a little furniture yoga. It goes something like this. You pull out the extensions from each chair base, then remove the larger seat cushions from each side and find a place to stow them. 
And then you run back to the rear lounge and get four smaller cushions and use them as new seat bottoms, two on each side. Then you raise the armrests on each side to provide support for the backrests. And then you move each backrest center so that the two people can share part of it. <sighs> Don't worry. There'll be some kind of instructions that you can follow, I'm sure. Finally, when I tried these configurations out myself, I thought they were better in concept than execution. The biggest beef I have with many of them is that the seat cushions and backs are just kind of sitting there. They're not really attached to anything. Yeah, you can see that there are some places to snap the seat backs into place, but they're not available in all configurations. And so I kind of felt like things were sliding around. I'd rather have less configurations that are better thought out. Okay, let's talk about the Murphy bed. It's pretty simple to set up. You need to make sure you have the seat cushions in place and the tabletops folded away. Then you just unlock a couple pins and drop down the bed. It's pretty straightforward. The bed's 68 by 76 inches, and if you're over six feet tall, you're gonna be okay. I'm 5'10", and you can see that I have plenty of room. A couple standout features are the built-in backrests that are adjustable so that you can sit up and watch TV, and the bank of awning-style windows above. Keep in mind that the slide-out has to be out for the Murphy bed to have enough room to drop down. If Jenny Craig's working for you, you'll have just enough room to squeeze between the bed and the kitchen counter to get to the bathroom at night. And I know if you're as old as me, you're running to the bathroom at night. Let's talk quickly about some standout features on the Unity FX. First, there's ducted AC and full water filtration standard. Also, there's the Truma AquaGo Comfort Plus instant hot water heater, and I love the Comfort Plus model because it constantly recirculates hot water in the lines, so you're never waiting when you turn on the hot water. And Leisure Travel opts for the upgraded Mercedes chassis with all the driving safety assist features like blind spot and collision detection. There are also a couple upgrades worth a shout out. I wish every coach builder offered a Wi-Fi cellular extender. It's one of those things every modern camper needs on the road. And the power stabilization jacks are only for stabilizing and not for leveling, but they will eliminate that wobble that you see in some of my videos as I walk around. All right, let's head into the galley where we're also going to talk about the FX's electrical system. I love the modern and sleek look of the galley. Shown here is the Glamour Decor Package with Bianco White matte finished upper cabinets. Ooh wee! Very sexy! A clean looking Corian counter and beautiful curved radius cabinet doors below the sink all complement each other and work well. You've got a big window with awning style lower windows that open and a dedicated fantastic fan above, so ventilation is great in this galley. Also, Camper Dude, one of my subscribers, pointed this out, and I agree with him. A stove's placement should be away from any furniture, so that when we guys cook, we don't mar the furniture with our epic cooking failures. Good point, Camper Dude. You and I are safe to cook in this galley. About the only ding I have is that there's no counter extension. So that limits your prep space to what you see here. As far as storage, you've got loads of it. The upper cabinets are 12 inches deep, so your plates should fit up there fine. You've also got a tall and deep pull-out pantry. And on the other side of the galley, you've got a 6.7 cubic foot three-way refrigerator with a separate freezer and above, a convection microwave. Both the refrigerator and microwave doors are positive locking. Bonus points, leisure travel vans. One last thing of note. Look down. You've got plenty of aisleway width, even with all those drawers open. If you're standing at the stove, someone can easily get past you to get to the rear of the coach. 
Let's take a look at the FX's electrical system. First off, it's just lead acid batteries. No lithium upgrade available here. Time to step into the 21st century leisure travel vans and offer a lithium upgrade. Also, the 1000 watt inverter is lacking by today's standard and we need at least 2000 watts to run things like the microwave without needing to start the generator. Speaking of generators, both are options here. You can upgrade to a 3.6 kilowatt LP generator for $3,900 or for a whopping $7,800 go for the 3.2 kilowatt diesel generator. You can get up to 400 watts of solar for $2,800. So as electrical systems go, I think leisure travel vans can do better. At the very least, they should include a generator as standard. Time to move on to the back of the coach, where we're going to take a look at this rear lounge and the bathroom. Keeping in mind that we're in an RV that's 25 feet long, it's kind of cool that we have such a spacious second lounge back here. It's an L-shaped configuration tucked in the corner, which makes it cozy and private. There's a second 24-inch LCD TV facing towards the back. And once again, demonstrating its flexibility, there's a stowaway ottoman under that seat we're facing, which can also function as a workstation table or dining tray. If you have grandkids or you're shorter, this area could also be made into a small bed. But I'm 5'10", and you can see it's not big enough for me. Let's take a look in the bathroom. This is a dry bath, which means the toilet and shower are separate. Speaking of toilet, I'm a little squished on this toilet. My shoulders are scrunched and my head is hitting that thing above me. I've been in class B vans where I haven't been as squished. Turning to the shower, there's pretty good height here thanks to the skylight. Plus, the shower components are recessed, which gives me a bit more elbow room. As far as tank sizes are concerned, we've got really generous tanks on this Unity FX. Okay, it's judgment time. Should you avoid the Unity FX? Consider it? Shortlist it? Or buy it? I think you should consider it. There are other Class C coaches out there that are more practical than the Unity FX, including some from Leisure Travel Vans itself. Having two lounges is great, but I think trading a less flexible lounge for a permanent bed setup is a better way to go. Finally, you know I can't close out this episode without saying something about Leisure Travel Vans' short two-year coach warranty. The Leisure Travel Vans brand is synonymous with quality. And you know what? Their coach warranty needs to also reflect that. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, then give me a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking any of the numerous subscribe buttons on your screen. And remember to hit that little notification bell for all the latest from me right when it drops. Also, I'm completely independent with no RV sponsors like some other RV channels. So if you want to help support my independence, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash ultramobility. All right, that's it for now. We'll catch you next time. Remember, vote for the RVs that you want reviewed and compared. Check out the link in the video description below. See ya.